Hi guys, I'm Jesse at strobepro.com and today I'm going to be showing you the Strobepro X60M. This is a manual speed light and has our built-in X-series radio transmitter. Let's take a look what's inside the box. So every Strobepro speed light will have a protective carrying pouch like this. Inside you're going to have the speed light itself and then a flash hot shoe foot. Um, this foot is nice, it's got a quarter inch thread here so you can mount that to a stand as well. On the flash itself, you've got a couple of things you need to pay attention to. The battery door here, you've got an arrow that slides forward, opens up, and then you've got your four AA batteries in there. We recommend using Enerloop batteries. Um, they're just very high quality, run really well in speed lights. Um, moving to the bottom here, we've got our metal flash foot um, to lock anything down, like this flash foot, for example, or the hot shoe. You would just slide that straight into the bottom here, so just like that, and then turn the dial down just until it's secure. You don't want to over tighten that. On the other side of the flash, we've got a port here. This holds a PC sync port and a legacy control port, which you won't need to use unless you have the old controller system. Um, on the front of it here, we've got our pop out diffuser and the bounce card. Be careful when you're pulling this out. You don't want to rip this out. You will eventually pull the card right out and then it'll have to be sent back to be put in. Keep in mind when this comes out, the wide angle diffuser, your zoom will be set to 14 millimeters. So you want to make sure when you put that back in that it clicks into place. That will re-enable your zoom there. On the front of the flash, you're also going to notice a rubber protective cover there. When you pop that open, this flash can accept an external battery port and the port is a Canon connector that you want to use on there. Um, this is your optical sensor up in the front that also projects your focus assist beam. Um, this flash, you can turn the head in multi different angles like that. It'll lock in. You can turn it all the way around here as well. And the nice thing about the X60 is it's called an X60 because it's a 60 guide number. That's the most powerful speed light that you can get on the market right up there um, with Canon's highest end. And the nice thing about the Stro Pro X60 is that it has high speed sync enabled and you're also going to get the built in radio control on there as well. So let's power on the X60 manual here. That's done with the switch over here. Just slide it up and it's gonna turn on. You'll hear the zoom enable and you're gonna see a couple of things here. So right away up in the top corner, we have an M and 128. The M stands for manual mode and the 128 is the power level. So to change the power level, we just rotate the dial and you'll see those um, one third increments pop up on screen. And this will dial all the way up to one over one, which would be full power. Now, when you're using this on camera, this is the mode that you wanna be in, manual mode. And when you push your shutter, it will fire the camera. We can change this mode if we wanna hit the mode button over here. Now you see it says multi. Um, multi, we still have the same power enabled, but you'll see two other numbers over there, the hertz and then the number of shots. We control those by pushing the middle set button right here. So we hit set, it's gonna start blinking. We can rotate that, lock it in, and then we can rotate this to lock in the number of shots. Now when we hit the test button, this is gonna blast off a whole bunch of shots there. Um, so if you want to use that mode, you can do it there. Now, if we go back to manual, we've got a couple other buttons on here. So we've got our zoom button. If we hit that, we can rotate this dial from 20 millimeters all the way up to 200 millimeters. And that's just going to, you'll see it happen in the front of the flash. It closes down the, uh, the diaphragm there and tries to push the flash further when we're up at 200 millimeters there. So if we go back down, 
we can lock it in there. Um, over here, if we push this button, this is going to turn on the autofocus assist beam. You can kind of see it on the table here if we come in with the other camera. It's projecting this pattern uh, right on my hand. I'll just turn it back on there. So that's if you're in low light, that's going to turn on. And we can set how long we want that on for in the custom functions, which we'll do in a second here. Um, if I hold this button, this is going to turn on high speed sync and you'll see the little symbol pop up there. Now to enable high speed sync, you have to be using the Strobe Pro XT controller. So either for Canon, Nikon, Sony, soon to be Fuji and Panasonic as well. If you don't use one of those controllers, the high speed sync will not be enabled. So your maximum shutter speed will be determined by your actual camera. With high speed sync, we can shoot all the way up to one eight thousandth of a second. Um, going over here, we can go into a couple of the uh, custom functions here. So this FN button, if we hold this down, what we're going to see, we have a sleep and we can rotate that for the number of minutes that we want the sleep on before the display will turn off. Um, I usually like to leave that off. If I hit it again, this is the focus assist beam. So we can set that from 10, 20, 30. Um, however long we want to leave that on. This is the beep, so when the flash recycles, you'll see the little symbol pop up there. If you want that to make a noise to let you know it's recycled, you can turn that on or off. Uh, this is the backlight, so in a dark lit room, it's tough to see because we're all lit up here, but you can see the backlight is on there and it's uh, lit up. You can turn that on or off. We'll just go back to where we were there. Now this is the optical slave. We have S1 and S2 here. S1 means that the optical slave is looking for any flash to trigger it. So it could be your pop-up flash, another speed light. Once this flash sees it in the front sensor, it would fire. S2 is when you're using TTL speed lights. So TTL speed lights emit an infrared burst first. Um, S2 would ignore that infrared burst and then fire in sequence with it. Normally you would only use S1. But we've got a much better feature to trigger this flash than S1 and S2, and that is the built-in radio signal, which will fire this flash up to 300 feet away. We'll have full power control. Um, we can turn it up and down, we can fire it. It's really a nice feature. Let me show you how to use that right now. So down in the bottom, we have a group and channel. And then just above that, we have that little kind of sideways lightning bolt. What we want to do is turn this on. Okay, so we're going to hold that. You're going to see that little wireless symbol in the bottom left hand corner flash. When I rotate it once, it says M and I rotate it again and it's going to show S. What M is, if I turn on there, this flash can also be used as a master, okay? So we can control multiple groups of flash just by hitting the group and the channel button. So if we had other speed lights set, this actual flash will control it. That feature is great, but really what we're concerned about with is the other mode, which would be the S. You'll see that S pop up there. That means that this is the slave now, and we're gonna use the trigger as the master. So just a couple things that are different here. You're gonna see now that that symbol pops up. It's gonna say S, which is slave. We're gonna have a channel over there and we have our group show up on the top. Now to control the group, we would just hit the group button. It's switching there, A, B, C, D, E. So we have five different groups. We'll leave this one on A. And then we're just gonna set the channel as well. So if I hold the channel group button now, you're gonna see the channel button blink and we're just gonna rotate that dial till we decide on a channel. So let's just set this at one, push the set button and we're locked in. Now this flash is ready to receive the command from the controller. So let's take a look at the controller now and show you how that works. So I've got the Strobe Pro XTN transmitter here. We also make this for Canon, Sony, soon to be Fuji, Panasonic, and Olympus as well. 
Um, let's take a look at a couple of the features. On the top, you're gonna to have the hot shoe there that will also pass through any information if you add another receiver or a flash on top of it. We've got the test button here, um, which is flush mounted. Over on the other side, if we pop open this rubber cover, we've got the firmware update port, which is a USB. And then we've also got the PC sync port there as well. This transmitter can also be used as a remote shutter release if you pick up the receiver as well. Over on the other side, we've got the main power button here, and then we've got our power button for our focus assist beam. When we turn that on, um, this will project a focus assist grid and low light out of there, so you can turn that on if you need it. To install the batteries, best thing to do, hold it like this with your thumbs on the arrow, push forward, that battery compartment will open, and two AA batteries in there. Now one important thing, just like our speed lights, is this wheel here. This is how we secure it to the hot shoe, but it's got a locking pin. We'll show it with the other camera here. When this wheel is all the way retracted, that pin retracts, but when we turn that wheel up, you see that top pin, it's extending out. That's to secure it in case you know, you got bumped or something, it's not gonna rip out your flash or your trigger. So when we're putting that on, make sure that the wheel is retracted up all the way, then we can slide it into our hot shoe, just straight like that. It'll lock in there and then we just turn it down. And just when you're removing it, make sure that wheel goes all the way up. Let's power this guy up and take a look at some of the features. Okay guys, the beautiful thing about the Stropro X60M speed lights when used with the XT transmitters is that we have full power control um, up to 333 feet away. For this demonstration, I've just stacked a speed light on top of the transmitter just so you can see it a little bit better. Um, you can do that if you wanted a speed light on camera, but this is just for the display. So earlier again, we set the speed light to the slave mode, and we did that just by holding the mode button here for three seconds. If we rotate it, there's master mode, and then we rotate it again, there's slave mode, which is the one that we want to be on. And we've got channel one and group A. So down here on the transmitter, what we want to do is have channel one and group A. So to set the channel, which is up top, right there we hit the channel button now we can rotate with our thumb dial to whatever channel we want there's 32 different channels but we just want number one there so the groups are controlled over on the other side you see this little arrow here as we rotate we see that change and we just want to go down to a because that's what we set our speed light to now to change the power on here, we're just gonna hit the middle button here. When we push that, it's gonna to begin to blink. We rotate the dial, and as I rotate that dial, you see up top there, the power is changing as well. So that's good up to 333 feet away again. Now we've got the high speed sync on there. When I turn this camera on, um, take a shot, it went away because I'm only at, uh, I'm under 1 250th of a second on the shutter speed. If I was to go higher than that, so I'm just dialing up the shutter speed right now. Oop, wrong way. You're gonna see the high speed sync symbol automatically turn on. So you don't have to go manually enable that each time as you rotate your shutter speed through it will automatically come on. So if I take it back off again, it'll turn off there. Um, if you have multiple speed lights, you can just set them each to a different group. So if I had another one, put it on group B and the way we would control that one, just rotate up to group B and we would change the mode. The double line means that it's off. So we can turn the speed light off here as well, just by hitting the mode it's going to show O off, O F for off up on the top there. 
turn that one back on. That's TTL, which won't do anything because we're using a manual flash. Now we're back on there. And then we would just, again, on the other one, change the mode as well. I recommend keeping them um, off if you're not using them. It's just less confusing when you're rotating through. So guys, the Stropro X60M Speedlight combined with the XT transmitter is an unbeatable combination. You're gonna have full high-speed sync on a manual flash, which is really unheard of in the industry. You're gonna have full power control right from your transmitter up to 333 feet away. It's really a beautiful system. This thing recycles quickly. Um, it's very reliable and very affordable as well. We think it's the best value on the market. Now, if you're not only interested in a manual speed light, you might be interested in our TTL speed lights, which look basically the same and function off the same controller. Not only that, our X Pro series strobes also work off the same controller. So you can have a strobe combined with the speed light to really make an unbeatable combination. So check out all our strobe pro products, our speed lights, our strobes at strobepro.com. And until next time, I'm Jesse. Thank you.